Hello, and welcome to another edition of News 6. This week, News 6 is brought to you by the 6th graders of Frank Elementary School in Perrysburg, Ohio. Our first story is about a unique place of worship. Angela Waters will tell us about it. Angela? Thanks, Jason. Recently, News 6 was given a tour through the Islamic Center in Perrysburg. The director of the center, Imam Khatab, led the tour and told us about the mosque. We learned why the Muslims face a certain direction when they pray and why they wash in the ablution rooms before they pray. <laughs> There are 327 mosques in the United States, but uh, the uh, mosque here in Perisberg is the only one which is uh, built traditionally, and it is the largest of all. The Muslim community started to immigrate to the city of Toledo early this century, and they decided to build a mosque or a house of worship for themselves while they were 25 families. But with the waves of the new immigration to the area, lots of people came and the mosque on Bancroft has become too small. So they planned to build a new Islamic center. And to build a new Islamic center, it was um, their idea to have a very big one. So in fact, the selection of the area of Perisberg was based on the amount of land which we have. When we, the Muslims, uh, perform our prayer, we direct our face towards the city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia. As it includes or it houses, the first house was built for the worshipping of God on earth, which is known in the Islamic terminology as Kaaba. That frame is a part of the Kaaba clause, the Kaaba which is the first house of God built on earth. Thanks, Angela. And now Angela Cups will tell us about an interesting hobby. Angela? Richard Seeley recently became interested in cutting, cutting and polishing gemstones. Richard is especially interested in cabochon cutting. A cabochon is a gem that is cut in a convent convex shape and highly polished. Some of the gemstones that can be used for cabochon cu cutting are jade, opals, agate, and turquoise. Richard explained the, the steps involved in this type of gemstone cutting. First, he decided what size and shape he wants his cabochon to be. Then he outlines the shape he has chosen on the rough out of the gemstone with an aluminum pencil. Next, he uses a six inch diamond edge trim saw to cut the rough edges out. After he has done this, he used a coarse grit wheel to be bevel the rough shape. Then he puts the stone on a dop stick. A dop stick is a wooden stick that is temporarily attached to the stone with wax. Then the stone is attached to the dop stick. It is much easier to grind and polish it. Richard uses the grit wheel again to grind the stone into a round shape. Now he is ready to polish his cabochon gem with chrome oxide on a cloth wheel. His last step is to remove the stone from the dop stick and mount it as jewelry, or he can use it as a decoration or lucky stone. Thanks, Angela. Our next story is about a newcomer to Frank Elementary School. Jenny Har will tell us about, it, about her. Jenny? Rebecca Glover and her family moved to Perrysburg this summer from England. Renee Simon spoke with Rebecca about her homeland and some of her interests. Where did you live in England? We lived 40 miles west of London and we lived in a small village. Why did you come to the United States? Um, I came to the United States because my daddy was transferred here. What kind of school did you go to? I went to a private school and we had to wear a uniform and all that. It was, it was quite nice. What subjects did you take? Well, I took English, math, religious studies, um, art, history, geography. 
How do you like school here in the United States? It's nice. I like it. <laughs> Is school here in the United States very different from England? Yes, it's, it's quite different because in England we had to wear a school uniform and um, we, didn't have, we didn't have a big library like you do here and it was very different. Um, we had netball and that's kind of like basketball except we don't have the board at the back and you just have to get the ball in. And our team was quite a good team and we won our league and so we were the champions. Do you have any hobbies? Yes, um, in England I did horse riding and I've done that for three years and when I came here um, Mummy said that I could carry on my horse riding. Thank you for talking with us Rebecca. This is Renee Simon reporting for News 6. Thanks Renee. Our last story is about how members of the Perrysburg Fire Department respond to a speci specific emergency. Mike Fishball will tell us about this procedure. Mike? Recently, News 6 reporters talked with Mike Grimm of the Perrysburg Fire Department about how they respond to calls for help when someone is in danger of drowning in the Maumee River or in one of the area ponds. Mike explains, Mike explained what happens after he receives a call from the dispatcher. When a person is drowning, we're conscientious about the time elements. A life and death situation occurring at your present time, and we have to take consideration the sooner we can resuscitate that patient, I'm saying get him out of the water, get him to the hospital with full patient assessment, the person has a better chance of living with these essentials in their mind. Maybe you're off the pond and you see a person that just went down. You see a drowning possibility right in front of your eyes. And the most time element lost is going to be in the time for you to find a telephone or send somebody to find a telephone. Call our dispatcher, which is our police and fire dispatcher. You will have to call her, advise her where you're at and what the situation is. That's our biggest time loss. From there, I will go ahead and receive the call because she has a private telephone line from the dispatcher right to me and it operates with a loud bell. Once I get the call, I'll take it on the phone, she'll tell me what I have from where I have it, and it's my obligation then to go ahead and get our equipment van, take it around to the back of the fire station and hook up to our boat. The whole idea being the fact that the boat needs to be hooked up to that, plus our van has additional scuba diving equipment. Once we go around back, hook up to the boat, we can go ahead, proceed on out to the scene. Thanks for joining us today. That's all for News 6. Have a good week. Local production of today's edition of News 6 is made possible in part by a grant from the Toledo Edison Educational Services Program.